Uh, it does seem like we are missing out on one squad, unfortunately. So it's just 19 squads remaining here as teams are making the rotations. Mm, did see someone die in the kill feed. I'm not quite sure if it was a full team or not, but either way, Fury with balls of steel just pushing over through in this tunnel by himself because he understands that there's really no reason the team from Lava City would be rotating over through the cave quite yet as SCN, very quick team fight happening. And this is against Ooh. MNK. Freck's going to get knocked. Plane has the bubble there. And also a nice battery going to be popped. But this is when you're SCN, you get extremely aggressive because you know this is the team that you need to go for. Frex gets finished. Sanayel gets knocked. And now it's just up to clarify, I believe, is the last player alive on this squad. Very unfortunate for MNK. But what a job by SCN. Pony Gang's going to love that. Yeah, and it looks like it was just the fast rotation getting punished uh, for Pony Gang there as they're trying to make their move, but they just got caught uh, got caught out on that rotation. Team Cruelty with the trigger discipline, not firing quite yet as the team does they take that geyser rotate uh, for the time being. That does mean, though, that the choke point is going to be contested. Prodigy Aces got into a fight, and it looks like Team Superior just went out that one super quickly. Prodigy Aces did go down, but they should be able to recover him now as uh, we have Joey Blackout getting another knock and back an issue finishing off uh, Hollow Pennon. So that's going to be, uh, I believe it's the meme skins going down. Scissors switching off the Pathfinder going on over to Ryzen. Very similar play styles, but a little bit more utility. Obviously not going to be able to hit the scan, so they switch it up just a little bit as the Wally Catcher's going to start to push in. Nox Gas Grenade is going to be put back into the pocket there as Kodagami didn't want to go and get too aggressive on this one. Instead, it looks like he just wants to try to own the top of this building. Portal's going to come through. Stink's going to just reevaluate the situation, relocate, and try to take over this building because this roof is one of the priority areas to go and hold. And that's exactly what Stink is thinking. No reason to go and try to throw this one as SCN, actually, after taking out a majority of MNK, is going to fall to Sweaty's only. So Sweaty's only could be that third team to get back in here possibly try to contest with MNK and Pony Gang. Yeah, Wally Catchers with full control over this building as we join on board with Breakfast Club. Nades has a slide away from that nade as uh, he goes ahead and pops that blast door once again. Boxy by himself, though he got swung on, but they are able to get the one knock and got one trapped in the corner. Lost. When we get the good, we'll be able to get the trade, but the numbers advantage is there for Breakfast Club and they should have the 2v1, the gas. Blows them down a little bit, but oh, Wizzly, excuse me, oh, Wizzy is there to cover this. And so, going to be raised by Wolves to go down in the top 16. Breakfast Club picking up those kill points over here at Harvester. As a quick update, it does look, look like we do have some updates to our leaderboards. MNK actually have taken the way of the lead from Pony Gang as Tech is going in, trying to get that abduct, trying to catch up to the squad, but they have safely made it out to the top here. And they're covering the door. Mm not quite leaving a crack open but tech does back away doesn't want to challenge 1v3 the rest of the team is here they've got the hp advantage as wizzy wasn't able to full heal himself but the big damage going down onto sweat he's only tech getting cracked getting challenged at that door box t will cover it for now as he pops that bat for himself and as he opens up for that challenge, he gets hit twice by that Mastiff, and he will go down. It's going to be good, fellas. Pick up two there. And Sweaty's only really trying to run this lobby with not too much time left in this qualifier night left to go. They need to go huge. But it looks like Casellas does come in for the third party. And then knock on to Blight. Good fellas tries to hold it down, but he will ultimately go down. Casellas just the one man army. Tech will fall. It's going to be Fade to pick that one up with the cost of gas. But Kanaka's pets have missed out on two. And now it looks like Breakfast Club still alive with Wizzy in this will force him back. It looks like Wizzy is in a possible situation to get the res. He's going to go for the finishes instead. Now the res out into the open as Casella still needs to heal inside. What a battle over here towards the tail end of Harvester. All these teams rotating. And like you said, all these teams realizing with only two games left that they really need to step it up in the kill department and in the placement department is also going to get a knock onto senpai and we can expect this to continue to be just an all-out free-for-all battle all over the map right now is saucer going to have to pop the q pop the battery 
and survive behind this blue container as long as possible. You can see the two-player outline sitting in front of him. Also, he's going to be scanned, so they're going to have some sort of idea. And they also, because of the scan, realize that he's healing, but it doesn't matter. The Eva 8 with the blue bolt just so strong. Massive they're going to connect there for Bowser as well, and that's going to be Team Cruelty going down to PBS. Unfortunately for Bowser, I don't think he's going to be able to get this med kit off. Maybe. Oh, but he should be able to get res. <laughs> Bowser. <laughs> he thought he had it. I thought he had it too. It was so close. It was like a half second off, but PVS do survive that. And it's very important because they're one of the middle of the pack teams right now. It's Team Superior in third place. Vibes tied with them for 27 points. Milkman and PBS are currently tied with 23 points in fifth place. So if they can have two big games in a row, they can definitely steal this one away. We know that right now, Pony Gang still should be up as Flying Platypus tried to take a fight. The port has been used by Bronzy to try and recover Mercy only, but he's still so far away from it, falling towards that port for now, but no pressure. He's got the purple knock shield as well. So it looks like he will be able to make it into safety. As you can see, Bronzy and Pride just watching Bronzy getting ready to knock him in and they get him saving Private Mercy. What a successful operation coming out from Flying Platypus. That knockdown shield just so useful in these type of situations, but also Bronzy with the sidearm uppercut to get his boy back inside the door so Pride can go and hit the res. And also I like that Pride is not interested in wasting his dome. They understand they don't need the fast res. This should be completely okay. And Bronzy says, hey, take this helmet instead. Let's try to get some more resources from our two big boys here as Team Superior is down Prodigy Aces right now, but the good thing is they have Joey Blackout, so they should be able to set up inside one of these buildings as Rakanishu takes big damage, about 50 to 60 damage, with just that one single Thermite hitting his big toe. So now he's just trying to evaluate this area and figure out how they're gonna go and set up. The problem about this building is going to the high ground is a little bit difficult. It's better to hold the bottom of this building because there's so many grenades that could come through from their little crevices over towards the side. As you can see, there's about two or three slits on each side through those little window sills. So that's why Team Superior right now, based on being down a player, is electing to play this bottom hand side. But if they do get scanned, and if another team feels like they want to get aggressive and get points, don't expect Team Superior to be safe much longer. Yeah, and unfortunately for Team Superior, even though they do have the banner of Prodigy Aces, they don't have control over the building that has a replicator. So they can't get a mobile respawn beacon. And it's basically a mile away from them without that wraith. All the other teams that are challenging them currently in Lava City. But over here on the north-hand side, over by that Beacon building, as you can see, trying to get some scouting information. There is one player on the roof, does spot that one out, tries to keep the drone alive, and he will be able to successfully pilot it into safety as uh, absolute units are playing just on the edge here. They were able to get the scan for us, and so we know that it continues to pull over to Lava City. It's just which ending is it going to be? There are so many uh, permutations of endgame circles here over at Lava City. There really is. One of those areas is exactly where you saw Bronzy and his team setting up over towards that triple uh, story building with the zip line where they ended up getting punched back in and saving Mercy only. There's another one that ends kind of where that blue trailer is that's over kind of the rotation from Geyser. And then there's a handful of endings that are actually in Lava City itself. So this could continue to pull any which way. We'll see exactly which one it does favor. But with 10 squads left, you still have a lot of opportunities to kind of get into Lava City and play this one slow with still, what, three or four zones remaining. I'm not expecting many teams to continually duke this out. This is probably where the game should slow down and going into the next zone, probably still around seven, eight squads a lot. Yeah, as uh, you can see, with the 10 squads remaining, we know that the one player that is missing is currently Team uh, Team Superior's Prodigy Aces right now. Uh, and every other squad is full health, and most of them at this point, um, with the amount of fighting that we've had in the early game, have already found themselves up. Oh boy, Ak, taking a lot of damage there. Does have that Phoenix kit, but Mooney is forced to bat as well, and Cherished will pop a Phoenix kit for good measure as well now. Mooney throwing down that scan for his squad has a team to their east currently playing that car the sm position i would normally call it here is absolute units are still playing on the edges here as they do have a team playing the major building of sorting factory getting shot from the south as well and so it's multiple teams um at this juncture but they're looking for these edge kills that's the way they want to walk uh walk this one in 
and uh, they have a minute and 45 to work with. Team Superior, going to try and make a play for this Replicator. No, never mind. It's an empty drop, unfortunately. I was thinking maybe they were hoping that there was a mobile respawn beacon up there to try and get Prodigy Aces back into this, but Absolute Units now pulling the trigger. Do have the uh, defensive bombardment giving the Absolute Units the ability to take the roof now. As you can see, all three members of this squad currently playing inside the office, but Sleepy Panda is slowed down by the Caustic Barrels already being set up. Fat Fruit Ninja with the Arkstar has to back off as two of them now are cracked. It's all up to Lifty. Sir lifts a lot. We'll see if he can hold the line for his squad as the full three-man swing out onto the Absolute Units as they have lost out on two already, getting knocked around by the Melees. Breakfast Club will wipe them out now. We're down to our top nine. Guess Breakfast Club had the bigger unit, Jamerson. That's all I got to say. A nice job. Uh, just really destroying that team in a matter of seconds there was a couple of really nice grenades that were placed but when you go and throw that grenade if you don't wall peek fast enough you get ripped for a majority of your shields and that's exactly what happened sir lifts a lot had a good bubble but as soon as they realized how split absolute units were they immediately sent it out the other door to, towards the two weak people and there's nothing that you could do right there if your lifts a lot now we see what mst is doing over towards the rotation over towards lava city again with so little teams left in this lobby only nine squads left on zone number three. They're going to have a lot of real estate to work with. And this is a good spot to be. This train station area. Oh, unfortunate for that barrel for six. He's not going to be able to connect. And they do end up going in on this. Six is ready. The bubbles end up getting used. The rest of the players are here. Does Tempest want to go and try to use his EMP while the bubble is there for him? That's always one of those toughest spots about being in crypto is if you're directly in the thick of it, you don't have time to go and use all of your utility. Metro realizes that is not his gas. And they're going to start to back off as six is the only person in the vicinity that's able even to do anything bubbles down offensive environments not there they're gonna to have to relocate yeah importantly though six held the line who was holding that door the entire time emp gets used as well they're trying to buy more and more time for themselves six continuing to be a nuisance to the squad making sure they can't poke out from this door as the rest of this squad does recover slow healing with the syringes with the cells as well so they do recover for the time being but the pressure is uh, still there it looks like the team does completely back away this is going to actually afford them the opportunity to go for a scan if they wanted to but it looks like the ring will go ahead and pull down over towards dome tempest has gone down madara finds that with the sniper kill onto him he does slowly start healing up throughout all of this but again six is making sure that no one pushes out onto the rest of his squad from inside the train station that now they can try to push into the low ground here but that's a pretty hard commit onto it six is just doing a great job currently just buying so much space for his squad it's a great example uh from six's screen on how to get aggressive with caustic we know that caustic is known for being that really annoying player in matchmaking that really can't push in a building but when you watch six he's doing both he's got defensive barrels over towards the backhand side and he continues to place these barrels in front of them and elects to either shoot them or not based on what the other team is doing and you love to see it this is some great great impressive caustic play coming in from six and if he had the Nox gas grenade right now, that team would be absolutely done for. Oh. But instead, it's the reverse Nox grenade. Mercy's going to throw his sixes ready. He's in the thick of it. He's going to have to hit a battery throughout all of this. Tempest still fairly healthy. They're going to be able to get the knock and finish onto, I believe, Mercy only because of the zoning happening from the barrels. And that's going to mean a free armor swap happens as well. So very nice place coming in from MST. You got to give a lot of credit to six. Here comes a third party, though. The Wally Catcher's coming in on this, and it's full purple armor as well, checking every single angle there on the opposite side of the train tracks as uh, they do throw down that scam. But great God, gets taken out. It's going to be Pride helping out MST, and they stay alive for now. But they are turning the tables. MST losing out on six. That is their caustic player out. The bubble has been used by the Wally Catchers, but it Stink is the only one currently healthy right now as he does stick the res currently losing out on Kodagami as Metro goes for that peak. Massive is coming up big, but Stink will get the knock on to Metro. They are now down to one player. It's Tempest once again, though. Try and clutch this one up for his squad. Starts sticking the res now onto his teammates just in time as the zone starts closing in. 
Exactly. The zone closing in is the key thing here. I don't, I'm not sure if Six is going to have enough time to even hit a battery, let alone even get a single heal off. Tempest is going to have to oh. bail as well. Metro is going to go down to the zone. And that's so unlucky, the timing there. Just one or two extra seconds, and all of MST could have potentially made a bubble play. Instead, it looks like Madara is going to pick up a couple of kills over towards the side. The ring is going to do a lot of damage as well. Not quite sure if we still have that last player from M and K that's riding it out still too, trying to pick up some extra placement points. But PBS, like you said, Jamerson, in this high ground area in that kind of TSM spot, looking really strong. Flashpoint got a huge knock on to Madara. And so that's gonna be Pony Gang missing out on one. Madara gets thirsted there as PBS have the complete control over this zone. You can see they're doing a great job of controlling every angle as well, making sure that they have an eye inside a dome as well. It's Bowser using this headshot angle. He does have the barrel set up as well as Team Superior still lit alive throughout all of this, never able to get uh, Prodigy Aces back into this match, but hey, they've hit top four at the very least. Joey Blackout though will go down. That's gonna be Pal with the G7 Scout to pick that one up. The airburst nades come in as well. Joey Blackout really bleeding out here. Sorcerer still has to be careful. Does have a full squad to his west right now as he wants to commit onto this kill, but he understands that the position is so much more important, especially when they have the basically the rest of this entire zone. This is great for PBS. This is why that spot is so highly coveted and why the dome rotation out of the backhand side ends up proving very useful as Vibes now going to pick up all this loot. 10 seconds into the zone comes. I really think that Ak is going to have to make a portal play here. You can see the rock that they're playing. It's going to be a rock. It's either going to be a portal play to get them in or it's going to be a portal play to open up some angles and Ak's going to have to do some big damage over towards the side. This is really what it all comes down to. I don't think this is going to even go to zone six. Yeah, as you can see, Pony Game is still alive, but it's just Fury uh, left in this as... We have Team Superior trying to march their way on up. Fury gets finished off. It's a top three. It's going to be a 3v3v2 here as PBS watches out for Ak. Big hit, 77, forcing him back. That's the armor cracked as Saucer will try to back away to the rest of his team. Does have the cover of the rock to work with as well, but they still need to hold the line. Rakanishu just below them as they do go for that wide swing on the north end side sorcerer pulls out that r301 does some massive damage with it pal picking up rakanishu now it's the top two and it's going to be pbs to take game number four but most importantly we have to keep track of our top two teams pony gang made it there into the top four we saw mnk going down early on in this match mnk had a narrow